Castmaster. So Andrew invited me here today to show me how to make my own Castmaster. Now Castmasters are notoriously expensive. You lose one, you lose two, and all of a sudden you're out 30 bucks. Uh, so Andrew, thanks for having me out today. And uh, what are we doing? Uh, we're gonna make a Master Cast Castmaster. It is a bootleg homemade Castmaster. All you really need is the blank uh, and a hook. And if you want, you can tie in a bucktail. It's pretty simple. We'll go through it and we'll save you a little bit of money and hopefully teach you how to make a Castmaster. Awesome. So uh, Andrew, a little bit about Andrew. Andrew's a very hands-on guy, as you can tell. He actually works in the shop that we're in now. Uh, yeah, so I do paint lettering. I'm a sign painter by trade, so what you're looking at here is some of my work. So yeah, so Andrew's definitely a handy guy, but just because he's handy and you might not be, doesn't mean you can't make one of these uh, for yourself. Uh, you know, in my opinion, the fish don't care what brand is stamped on your master cast or cast master lure, but if you build something, uh, you know, decently well of quality, it should last a few seasons in the surf at least and catch you some fish. And the reason why I'm super interested in learning how to make my own is because I found through making my own crab snares, you get way more satisfaction actually catching the targeted species with a lure or a snare that you make yourself. Indeed, and I've actually caught stripers off of these, so they do work, uh, and they work pretty much the same as a Castmaster, so, and they're usually cost-wise, it's gonna be $2 and under for a wow. three ounce, you know, wow. if you're doing like a half ounce, maybe a dollar, maybe a little bit less, so it's, so that's, that's easily 15 to 20% of the actual cost of a, of a full price Castmaster. Yeah, so like a two, three ounce Castmaster is probably like 10 to $15, I think. Wow. So these are gonna be about two, so you're saving like 13 bucks. If you're making a big one, but if you're making a small one, it's a little bit different. Okay, so. Okay, wow, so for the cost of one full price Castmaster, <laughs> with a little bit of time, a little bit of research, uh, you can actually make five or six. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. so. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So links will be below uh, the vid in the description uh, for all the stuff that we're using today to make our own. Uh, but before you buy those, maybe watch us make our very own. So Andrew, show yeah. you how to do it. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. So Ish's first challenge is to build the most basic cast master, master cast. <laughs> uh, this is a one and a half ounce. Uh, and I think this is a size one treble on it. Um, as you can see, they come like this. This is a blank. Split ring at the front, split ring at the bottom. Uh, so here you go. Just awesome. uh, see if you can make that happen. Okay, it doesn't matter what side. It does. I put, this, I put the hook. Yeah. So the if you look, there's an oblong side right here. Oh right, right. So right. that's the that's the side that all the weights on, and uh, it gives a nice little shimmy to okay. the uh, the master cast. So if this is tied to your main line or your clip. Yep. Um, it's this kind of big bevel right here yep, that causes it. the swimming action. Exactly. So this is kind of your fixed point here and this mm -hmm. is what gives all the action. And uh, of course this is where the fish are probably going to want to hit. And right. That's where the treble and the bucktail is. Right? For sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's just, uh, for this first one, try to get this uh, this hook on there. Nice treble. S see if you can do it. Okay. Yeah, this is a size one VMC 9649 okay. uh, treble. Brand new. Pretty sharp. This is a set of uh, Poor Man's Leatherman's uh, multi-tool, and the reason why I picked it up, it was 15 bucks on Amazon, link in the description below. <laughs> it has a split ring uh, set of pliers. Now, a lot of uh, Leatherman's uh, or you know similar multi-tools don't have a split ring pliers, and I bought this one specifically for my fish bag. This will actually be the first time that I'll put it in use, so let's see if I do it right. So, you grab it, uh, probably want to grab it, you probably want to pinch the split ring where the actual split occurs, just to open it up like that. And I'm gonna get it started. Slip the uh, treble eye through it, move it out of the way, and slide it into place. Yeah. Step if, one done. Yeah, and so that's your that's your cast master. If you wanna tie in a bucktail to give it more action, you can. You don't okay. have to, but that's uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. And uh, one thing, these split rings are pretty big, so you can actually buy smaller splits yeah. uh, on their site, and they're super cheap. Um, you have some actually over here. These ones are a little bit smaller, 
Uh, these are, what is this? Uh, size four, 30 pound split ring, and those are a bit bigger. The other thing you can do is uh, tie on uh, a longer shank single hook. Um, some people don't like trebles yeah. because they think they don't get as solid of a hook set, which I kind of agree with, yeah. especially on the bigger ones, but. Yeah, so a striper will hit this bear. A perch will probably hit this bear. Uh, but if I wanted to go an extra mile and put a bucktail on, how would I do that? All right, so that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so this is the point in the program where we turn this bear hook into this bucktail hook. Um, and you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need thread, uh, your bobber, uh, Sally Hansen's hard as nails. Um, I use a needle to get the thread through the bobber because sometimes it'll break off. And then your most important part is the actual bucktail. Wow, wait, so you're telling me so actually, I didn't know this, but you're saying that the term bucktail in the world of fishing stems from the hairs that actually come off a deer's bucktail. Yeah, so they uh, they take these, they tan them, uh, they skin it, and on the top of it, wow, it's colored, and on the bottom side, it's white. So most of the bucktails that we use are typically have white hairs. You can buy them with dyed hairs. I think you can dye them yourself. Wow. If you really wanted to, uh, that's a step that I've never taken, but. Uh, <laughs> white works well. Yeah. White works well enough. So so you can actually buy these bucktails online? At yeah. local shops, where do you get yours? Uh, you know, a fly tackle shop is gonna be the best place to get it, uh, if you can find one. But you can also get them off of eBay. I believe this one was from eBay and they rate them according to the length of the hair. Okay. So these are uh, four inch hairs, which are pretty long, but they're good enough. It's better to have them longer than shorter. The longer ones cost more money, shorter ones, less money. Um, but the nice thing about them is that if you get uh, ones that have four inch hairs, you can cut them down to three inch hairs. Um, right. or whatever, so you have a little bit of room. You can always subtract, but you can't add. So how does this turn into that? All right, so that's the that's the next start. Uh, so we're gonna start off with the treble, okay. and uh, can you hear me that? Sure. Uh, Bucktail? Buck yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So start off with the treble, you're gonna have your bobbin, and then scissors, right? And you're just gonna go ahead and cut off uh, a little section of hair, um, you know, you don't want to get it from the top because that's the brown side, but you can do it from the uh, the bottom or the back side. Um, and you don't have to be too precise about this this point. I just grab a section and then give it a snip at the base. So you're grabbing like a good pinch worth. Yeah, this is a good uh, this is a good pinch pinch of bucktail. Right. Um, from there, I like to set it down. Okay. And then kind of fan it out, and then. You know, you can take something to help you kind of divide it into thirds. Okay. Since we're working on a treble hook, yeah, uh, we're gonna lay it in like three sections, right? Oh. So this isn't perfect by any means, but it's good enough. So next, next, next thing that we do is we take the bobbin, thread it through there, and then just go on and like tie a handful of wraps on here, um, and just get it over the hook so that you're kind of making like a base layer. Okay. So once you get some good wraps on there, um, what I do is I put down a little bit of Sally Hansen's hard as nails. And all this is is a acrylic nail polish, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's it smells terrible, so you know it works. Uh, <laughs> and it hasn't know, been uh, banned yet? No, nah, it uh, hasn't been in a band yet. So it's just a clear, uh, clear coat essentially. Yeah, probably any clear coat will do, but this is the one that Andrew uses, so it works for him. He's caught fish with it. Give it a shot. Yeah, it's uh, it's what a lot of the old school guys do. But so once you get to here, you put on a little hard as nails, just go ahead and make another like fresh cut. Um, so you have your hairs here and they're all kind of like a straight line. Okay. And then from there, you kind of just pick it up and you start making wraps with it, right? Okay. So, I'm not sure if you can see this very well, but you kind of pull it out and fan it out a little bit. Um, Make sure the hairs are going away from where the treble connects to your split ring. Yeah, exactly. So you, you don't want them to go the other way. <laughs> um, so once you get a few wraps on there, you can kind of take it, fan it out a little bit, 
um, and kind of shape it a little bit. Take off, throw off any like strays you might get. So that's our first wrap, right? All right, so just finished uh, wrapping this bucktail. As you can see, there's no white showing, which is kind of what you want. Um, you know, you went from the base all the way up to the eyelet. If you can help it, try not to get into the eyelet too much because the movement from the ring will kind of bust into there, but it's not that big of a deal, really. Um, so then you just cut it and you go back with uh, your hardest nails and then you do a coat over the top of it and that kind of seals everything in, right? So that's like the stop. Okay. Um, you probably don't need a lot, right? No, not really. A couple of dabs goes a long have, way. Yeah, I might have put too much on there. Who knows? <laughs> um, but you just want to make sure that it's on there and it's nice and even. What's the cure time for that stuff? Uh, From application to when it's ready to go in the water. Uh, the cure time. I don't know, man. Ask ask your wife. It's uh, <laughs> maybe a half hour. Okay. So you you can coat that and then just set it to dry. You can. Uh, rack it up or just set it down since it's a treble and then i usually do another coat on top of that cool. um in case i missed any of the thread yeah I missed any of the threads so you want to get as much of the or you want to essentially cover all the uh the red thread right yeah and that's uh that's what holds the bucktail together and that's what holds the uh entire assembly together so you want it all wrapped up and kind of mummified right yeah and i know a lot of guys put flash in their bucktails um this one is straight white this uh, bucktail jig right here um, has a little flash. Yeah, this one has it too. And uh, essentially, if you want to buy that, you can grab it from off screen. Uh, it's just pretty much tinsel that gets uh, threaded, and you put that on after you're, you're done tying a little bit, and you just tie it on. Okay. And do a few wraps, and all the way up to the, uh, the top of the thread. So. Okay. And you can control. The cool thing about making your own. Uh, um, the cool thing about making your own bucktail jigs or your own uh, cast master jigs, you can control how much flash, uh, you can control the color, yep. the thickness, the volume of the actual bucktails and how much flash you actually put into your bucktail assembly. Yeah, and so, you don't have to do this in red thread either. You can do any color you want. You can do chartreuse, you can do red, you can do black, uh, silver, whatever you want. So yeah. it's really up to you. I definitely recommend having one in your arsenal if uh, you don't have one. Um, go out and buy one if you don't want to make one, but if you found this vid, I have a feeling uh, you're at least tempted to see how it's done. And it's definitely doable if you don't have you know, a ton of, uh, ton of uh, hands-on skill with stuff. You don't really need too much to, to make your own cast master with treble and bucktail. Yeah, and if you don't want to make your own, just buy a cast master because it cuts through the wind, has good action, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with paying ten dollars on a lure that's yeah. gonna catch you a fish yeah. you know so that's true if it, if it catches fish it's worth its weight in gold yeah um but you know if you fish often enough chances are you will start losing these and it does sting <laughs> a little bit when you see you know ten to fifteen dollars uh, not come back on the end of your line it's happened to me enough where yeah. uh, i'm willing to find out how to make my own and maybe you guys will too so so andrew thanks so yeah, much for having for me sure. out here this is awesome yeah love the oh, shop yeah. uh love any angler that uh takes takes it literally into their own hands and makes lures to catch their own fish super rewarding super oh, rewarding. yeah yeah awesome well thanks guys for watching catch you guys in the next one um really appreciate your uh your time and your time we'll see you guys next time all right thanks, thanks you too <laughs>